My name is Keith Johnson of Biblical Foundations Academy International, where we inspire people around the world to build a biblical foundation for their faith. I just returned from a 10-week study, research, and discovery journey in the land of Israel to bring you this special report. According to many Christian and Messianic preachers, teachers, radio, and television hosts, this could be it. The day of the Lord may be just around the prophetic corner based on their interpretation of Joel chapter 2, verse 31. The sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. To complicate matters, it seems that the stars and planets are lining up to further fuel the fires of end times prophecy. According to these preachers and teachers, something is about to change because of a cosmic pattern that will commence on the dates of Passover 2014 and will reoccur on the Feast of Booths 2014, Passover 2015, and the climax cosmic event will take place on Feast of Booths 2015. As a powerful atom, they claim that since a solar eclipse is predicted to take place on Nisan 1 2015, or more appropriately, the first day of the biblical year, the end is near. Even NASA experts are weighing in on the significance of what is happening in the heavens starting on this year's Passover, April 14, 2014. A spokesman for NASA said, this is the first eclipse of the year and is well placed for observers throughout the Western Hemisphere. It will occur at the lunar orbit's ascending node in Virgo. This is the first of four consecutive total lunar eclipses in 2014 and 2015, a series known as a tetrad. Since the word tetrad couldn't be found in the Bible, the term blood moon has become the title of choice to explain the connection between what is happening in the heavens and what has and will happen to Israel on earth. What makes this teaching so compelling is the connection they make between past patterns in the heavens with historic moments in Jewish history as a way of legitimizing their quote unquote prophetic predictions. They claim that when this cosmic pattern of four blood moons happened in 1493 to 1494, after the Jews expulsion from Spain in 1492, it was a prophetic signal. They also claim that when this cosmic pattern of four blood moons happened in 1949 to 1950, after the time of the birth of Israel as a nation in 1948, it was a prophetic signal. I find it peculiar that God would send the signal a year after these two historic events for Israel. I also find it suspicious that the exact same cosmic pattern took place on Jewish feast days according to the calculated calendar in 162-163 CE, 795-796, 842-843, and 860-861, and there was no significant event in Jewish history with which to sync this powerful prophetic pattern. I'm sure the Bible astrologers slash astronomers will remind me of the tetrad, I mean the four blood moon pattern, that took place in 1967 to 1968 that coincided with the Six Day War that expanded Israel's borders that is causing so much international conflict today. I can hear them saying, wait a minute you planetary pattern party pooper, what do you say about that synced celestial signal in 1967 and 1968? Certainly I cannot dismiss that the first lunar eclipse I mean the first of four blood moons, that will appear on Passover 2014 will include an astronomical anomaly of Mars, often called the planet of war, appearing as a fiery red star next to the moon. Mars, Earth, and the sun will all align on April 14th in a rare opposition of the planets. My answer? That pattern happens uh, once every 778 days. But who's counting? I'm sure they will point to the trouble in Israel that is taking place right now increased conflict on the Temple Mount. My answer? The reason for that is because after Israel took back the Temple Mount in 1967, during the four blood moons, they gave it back to the Muslim Waqf as an olive branch for false peace. The Waqf now claim squatters' rights and strut around kicking off Jews and Gentiles who want the freedom to pray. Including me, by the way. As an important biblical side note, the only legal transaction for that piece of land took place between Aruna the Jebusite, who sold it to King David. But who cares? What about the shutdown of Israeli embassies around the world, they were sure they will say? Well, that just happened two weeks ago. My answer? That was because the Foreign Ministry of Affairs was on strike because they wanted better pay and benefits for their ambassadors. Those same embassies are back in full operations today. Certainly they're going to say this. 
What about the breakdown of peace talks between the PLO and Israel brokered by the United States? My answer, maybe the United States should spend less time trying to force false peace and spend more time and energy creating a peace plan with the God of Israel. Surely I cannot dismiss the fact that Israel is preparing for war privately and publicly. Military exercises on the increase, talk of war in government, synagogues and on the street. My answer, I agree. In fact, I was there for the first time ever public display of the Iron Dome defense system. I actually traveled to Tel Aviv to see this rare display of high-tech weaponry with my own two eyes. The way the IDF deals with inaccurate homemade rockets that are being launched against the people of Israel has truly inspired me. So much so, I requested that the company called Raphael, God Heals, that created the Iron Dome provide an English version of their explanation of how the defense system works for our BFA international audience. They obliged. 